Hello everybody, welcome back, my name is Stefan, and today we're going to resume our challenge with the Tall Devouring Swarm on the highest difficulty settings in game. As you can see here, this is what we're playing with, and indeed, let's resume with our save. Alrighty, we are back to where we left off, and uh, the situation in the galaxy is looking a bit dire. We have border contact with uh, dudes over to our north. Uh, that are overwhelming and domineering, meaning that if they decide to strike us at this point in time, they might actually overtake us. And of course, if they did that, it would be the end of the run, because, well, we're a devouring swarm, and any war will be total war, so we wouldn't be able to surrender any territory, they would simply consume us entirely. Our neighbors to the east, though, are a little bit nicer, they still hate us completely and utterly, however, they're simply unfriendly, and uh, so will not turn hostile and attack Skull. However, just in case they do, I will continue to fortify the station, though not to such a severe degree as Sabic. And uh, indeed, hopefully we'll be able to fortify those and uh, build up our planets, and uh, succeed overall. So, let's resume and see where the game takes us. Ooh, new contact. The Hilfer Annihilators. Yes, indeed, Hilfer Annihilators mean purifiers. We sense prey. Or, rather, a predator, because these guys are quite powerful. They have nearly as many pops as we do, and uh, they don't seem to have been focused on pop production at all throughout this uh, save. Instead, they probably just got an advanced AI start, and indeed, are starting to spiral out of control. So. Hopefully these guys don't attack anyone, such as our neighbors, because I'd much rather face an empire with three planets than a fanatic PR fire with five and a lot more pops. So let's, uh, let's wait and see and hope for the best. Oh no, we're getting a rivalry from our fellows at the pacifist regime of uh, Takanja. Well then, doesn't seem to change their opinion at all, so I don't care. Let's see if we can rival them in return. Oh no, we can't because, well, we're a devouring swarm and uh, rivals are not a thing. It really is a big hindrance to our influence production. And now we also get a new contact with uh, some materialists over here. They're just a different type of prey. And we also discover an Elgate, even though, well, we've already seen Elgates from our good neighbors over here and over here. Game, what is going on? But in all seriousness, it's probably due to the fact that uh, they had the Elgate when we discovered them, uh, rather than getting it later on. So that's the problem. Also, it does seem that these guys were having some problems uh, with the purifiers over here because, well, their empire is split in two and uh, the system connecting the two parts is uh, taken up by the purifiers and uh, this sort of border gore only happens through war. AI does not seem to like colonizing beyond uh, your choke points, so if you just establish a choke somewhere over here and all the territory here is completely open, they still won't take it even if the borders are open. They just really like those neat borders, I guess. Okay, so it looks like a federation has formed between these guys and these guys, and they're right on the opposite corners of the fanatic purifiers, so this may actually keep them in check, because otherwise they would uh, be able to come in and consume one of them, but now if they try to do so, uh, they're gonna get wrecked from both sides, and it's gonna be quite nice. Also, check out the length of this hyperlane. 
insane. Alrighty, we have finished our Supremacy Tradition Tree, and now we can check out what we can get. Nothing so far. Uh, we could go for something like Mastery of Nature, for example. We do have a lot of planets, and uh, districts are going to be filled up quite soon. However, I'd like to wait until Engineered Evolution, and uh, then start building some Clone Vats on all my planets. Because Clone Vats provide plus 33% to pop growth, and uh, that is quite powerful overall. An update on Sabic, our main defensive station, it is now at 3.3k fleet power, and we can easily go ahead and build up more defense platforms once necessary. Uh, once the war is declared, the AI does take its time to get over to the station itself, and so we would be able to pump out a couple defense platforms right before they strike. Since our economy is kind of struggling for the time being, I will hold off until actually building up the defense platforms until war starts, or we reach a late enough date where upgrading the station with defense platforms would be necessary. Alrighty, now time has come for our next tradition tree, and this time we're going to go for some adaptability. It's going to help us out quite a bit, reducing our housing usage, uh, overcrowding was a big problem on several planets up to this point, and it's going to provide a bunch of bonuses, including an additional building slot on all our planets, which is uh, quite nice overall, and we're going to make sure to take and we're going to make sure to take use of that because uh, that's going to allow us to build some hive warrens on some of our planets. And uh, not really have to worry about the lost building slot. Hive warrens are going to be quite nice, improving housing, and providing some extra amenities. Which is something that we do need on a lot of our planets, really. Also, in case you are wondering, the mega structure over a hunter is a ruined sentry array. Just saying. Oh no, we're getting insulted by the Hilfer Annihilators. Even for a loathsome Xeno, your species is particularly vile, bug. Well, thank you. How about this? We have evaluated High Executioner Dugaltum 1 as a candidate for joining the two Quintilian IQ swarm. Sadly, we must inform you that membership requires a rudimentary brain. Oof. Oh no, nuclear bomb on one of our tomb worlds. Who could have thought this was possible? While exploring some ruins near one of the major settlements on the lost encampment, a few colonists inadvertently activated the timer on an undetonated hydrogen bomb left over from the moon's previous nuclear war. With an estimated yield of 35 megatons, the bomb will wipe out several population centers if it detonates, it is unstable enough to be moved, and there's no time to evacuate the entire region. We must disarm it. Well, I'd say 10 months is plenty of time to move a whole population outside, but who am I to criticize the game? Obviously, this is beyond reproach. Alright, so at this point, our food production is quite down in the gutter, and uh, there's no very obvious way to fix it up. And so to remedy that, I'll simply go ahead and uh, institute that dietary balance. That way, our food production is going to skyrocket from minus 45 to plus 38. It's also going to allow us to uh, go ahead and colonize some of these remaining planets. 
and uh, yeah, consolidate our empire. Of course, once the 10 year timer runs out and we have colonized some of these planets, uh, I'll of course revert back to the food policy to increase pop growth ever further. However, for now, we'll just have to live with uh, a little bit decreased pop growth, which is a bit of a shame, but whatever. At this point, I'm also going to start upgrading some of these star bases. We do have some star base capacity, and I'll simply go ahead and uh, put some solar panels on them in order to slightly boost our energy card production. We do have a bunch of alloys, so this is all right. Alright, we have now unlocked another civic slot, and right now we can reform our government and select another thing. Uh, right now it seems that aesthetic is a very good idea. We are struggling a bit with our amenities, and I'm building way more uh, maintenance depots than I would like to, and so getting this reformation will be quite excellent once we get the influence. And uh, speaking of influence, getting more per month is going to help out with that too. But anyways, let's go get aesthetic. It's gonna be quite nice. We actually are in the positive for uh, most of our amenities so far, and I like that quite a bit. Uh, but anyways, we have now reached year 2250, and it's a pretty good time to wrap up the episode. So thanks to everyone for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed what you saw, and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one, coming out in a couple of days. I also have a Discord and a Patreon, links are in the description. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.